What is sciatica? Unfortunately, sciatica is a very common diagnosis that happens to patients that have low back pain or any kind of leg pain. And the sciatic nerve is actually the largest nerve in the body. It's a nerve that's composed of five different nerve roots that actually exit the lumbar spine and path their way down the, the lower back into the glutes, into the back of the legs, the calf, and feet. And the pathway of this sciatic nerve is a direct pathway of what we see with sciatic types of pain. And the pain that's associated with uh, sciatica is directly related to the compression of the sciatic nerve. And it can be felt anywhere along the pathway of the sciatic nerve. And the pain can be very mild, it can be severe, it can, it can be in intermittent, it can be chronic, it can be debilitating, it can be, and it can be anywhere from severe pain to numbing to radiating pain to tingling, and it can be anywhere down the course. Uh, in the low back, it's isolated, it can be down your hamstring, it can be in your feet, it can be down your back of your calf, and it tends to be unilateral. It tends to be on one side, not so much on the other. However, there are things that could affect it on uh, one side and not on this side and then on the other side. And again, the most common side tends to be the left leg. Now, what causes sciatica? Well, typically it's evolved with nerve pressure. There has to be something that's compressing the nerve tissue. And one often diagnosis that tends to occur is disc herniation after an MRI. So the most common thing happens is a patient will have low back pain going down into the leg. There will be recommended an MRI, and the MRI will say they have a disc herniation. And disc herniation is when the disc actually gel-like material bulges through the anterior fibers on the outside of the disc and starts to compress on the nerve. Now, disc herniations are almost always a result of spinal alignment, meaning the spine has shifted out of alignment, causing the disc to herniate and bulge into one side. Secondarily, it could be something called bone spurs. Now, bone spurs is when the bone of the vertebra of themselves begin to degenerate and to develop spurs as a result of abnormal alignment. Bone spurs are a sign of bone degeneration. Bone degeneration is always a result of abnormal alignment or pressure on the spinal vertebra. And once you start getting bone spurs, they can start, they decrease the amount of space for the nerves that they, when they exit the spine, they exit into the body. So the bone spurs can start to irritate the spinal nerves. Bone spurs, again, just like disc herniations, are almost always directly related to spinal alignment. If a spine's in its abnormal alignment, bone spurs are more likely to occur because the abnormal forces of gravity on an asymmetrical spine. Spinal stenosis tends to be another cause of disc herniation, and this one, the spinal cow canal is actually narrower or smaller in an area, and spinal stenosis can be a result of bone spurs, like I mentioned above. It can be a result of disc herniations or bulging that's herniating back into the spinal canal, decreasing the spinal space, and it can just be a, a result of actual spinal alignment. As two bones shift out of its normal position relative to another, they can decrease how much room is for the spinal cord and nerves. And unfortunately, spinal conditions like scoliosis can introduce unnatural forces to the spine, which can lead to spinal, uh, spinal compression to the nerve tissues and tissues surrounding the area, which can lead to pain or compression to the nerves, which can lead to sciatica. All these things are, are can lead to uh, sciatic-like symptoms. Now, what are some common symptoms when you actually have sciatica? Well, the first thing is going to be back pain. If you have pain in your lumbar spine, it could be a result of of compression to one of the nerve roots that actually form the sciatic nerve, and therefore you can have uh, back pain. You can have radicular pain down into your foot, into your legs, into your feet. The pain can be burning. It can be uh, tingling, it can be sensations, it can be shooting, electric shot-like pain, it can be numbness, it can be tingling. Since it's affecting the nerve tissue, it can start affecting functions of the muscles and joints in the area of the legs. So you can start feeling the ability, uh, difficult ability to walk on your toes or your heels. You can have weakness in one calf or one thigh or one, or, or one glute. You can have weakness in a hamstring. You can have weakness in different muscles that, which can be uh, affecting the sciatic uh, it could be a result of the nerve, or the sciatic nerve being affected or compressed. So patients, when they start feeling this sciatic pain, and especially if it becomes severely 
uh, more chronic and more debilitating, they start looking for treatments. And some people like to use like hot or cold therapy, like hot pads on their low back or wherever the nerve is to try to help with their feeling. But this is only a palliative treatment, I meaning it's not dealing with the structure. Another thing people should like to do is something called sciatica stretches or sciatic stretches. And these stretches can help, help improve what they're feeling, but it's not necessarily addressing the cause. Some of the other treatment tends to be like physical therapy. And when I say physical therapy, like general core strengthening, general physical therapy to help manage their pain. But again, unless you address the cause of the problem, normally this, the pain is going to continue to reduce. And then the last thing I like to look at is something structural. And structural tends to fall into two main categories, something I call structural chiropractic care. Structural chiropractic care is a type of or an approach that's going to use a combination of therapy, rehabilitation, traction, vibration, and exercise and chiropractic adjustments to help restore the spine back into a normal position. By doing that, you can start correcting all the things that are causing or the most likely cause of sciatic type pain which is compression to one of the nerve roots to actually exit the lumbar spine so the best way to manage sciatic pain number one is to address the corrective address the underlying cause of the problem which is going to be structure if you're not experiencing sciatic pain if you have family members that are and you're concerned about it actually happening well make sure that you maintain your spine in a normal healthy alignment by doing proper ergonomic types of exercises and stretching if you're already experiencing uh, sciatic pain, Scoliosis Reduction Center, we craft very proactive treatment plans that can actually cur deal with the underlying cause of the condition and help restore normal alignment to remove pressure off those nerves so the sciatic pain that you're feeling down the sciatic nerve can res help resolve by actually addressing the cause and not just treating the symptom. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.